Coach Riley, I don't care how you get it done. Just do it. You are Locked On Trojans, your daily podcast on the USC Trojans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, fight on, everyone. I'm your host, Mark Culkin, and thank you for making Locked On USC your first listen every day. Whether you're going to watch this show on YouTube or wherever you're going to listen to your podcast, this show is free. I appreciate your support. You can show your appreciation. If you're watching on YouTube, become a subscriber. It's quick. It's easy. It's free. Click that red subscribe button and you're done. You're almost done until you hit that smash button. Smash thumbs up. Big time. Helps the show. And I don't want you to miss one episode Monday through Friday or a post-game reaction. Click that bell notification button. There. You're covered. You're finished. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com for forward slash locked on college and use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. Daily fantasy sports made easy. Okay, deep breaths here. Check out the rundown. We're going to talk about uh, Coach Riley's biggest tests. They're waiting, they're coming up. Second segment, I'm going to talk about QB1. Is Caleb Williams distracted? And then I could not care any less about 2026. That has to do with recruiting. So stick around. Most of us like hot dogs with mustard. Ketchup does not go on hot dogs, period. End of story. Let's not discuss this any further. However, I think if you knew how a hot dog was produced, how it's made, you probably wouldn't like them as much. Look, I know this is a really loose analogy, and I could probably do a lot better, but Trojan football is a lot like a hot dog. We don't know how it's being made, but we know we enjoy it. Well, most of the time, we enjoy watching USC football. Coach Riley knows what he has to do. He just needs to do it. No matter how messy and gross making hot dogs are, he just needs to get his hands dirty. The way this team is produced and made, it, look, it's it's not something you feel really good bragging about. Making a hot dog is not something you want to show the world. That's all I'm going to talk about with hot dogs. So the Trojans right now are, they're 7-2. and two. It's not a bad record, but it doesn't really feel like they're 7-2. and two. It feels like an underachieving squad that has its focus elsewhere. I mean, one minute, they're leading Cal 17-7 to in the first quarter. By the end of the halftime, by the end of the first half, they're trailing 28-17. to And all I'm watching is Coach Lincoln Riley fighting to get a second put back on the clock so they can set up for a field goal attempt at the end of the first half. That's USC football? That's you. That's Lincoln Riley's offense begging for a second so you can kick a field goal. And then <laughs> when you win that protest, all of a sudden, you know, halftime's over, you know, almost over. USC's kicker, Dennis Lynch, he comes out of the locker room a little bit early and he, he's making like five in a row, practicing from the spot that he'll be kicking. And then when it's real, he comes out and he pushes the 33 yard field goal to the left. I mean, momentum was killed, and now you have to kick off to start the second half. That's not the way a hot dog should taste. Okay, I lied. (laughs) Look, I'm not sure what kind of grade Coach Riley has earned so far this season. But I'll be honest, his midterm grade wasn't great. Seven and two. And that included games against Utah. Notre Dame. Not in that order, but you get the point. So while 7-2 looks good on paper, USC lost those two toughest games against the two toughest teams on the schedule. And they didn't look prepared in either one. In my opinion. And here's the thing. Finals are approaching beginning this Saturday. You have the Huskies from Washington coming into town. 
And then after that, you're traveling up to Oregon. And then you're coming home to play UCLA. These are three hard games. These three, these next three games are going to tell us a lot about the state of the program, the job that Coach Riley and his staff have done preparing the team, and the team themselves. How focused are they? You know, recently in the last couple of weeks, uh, Coach Riley has talked about how the outside noise has kind of gotten to the team and how it's affected them. And he, he said you know, it would be naive if we didn't think it was going to happen. Nevertheless, well, the way you are going about business as usual, it's not working. I, I think it's time to try a different method. Come up with a new recipe. I know you're willing to make changes. We've seen it happen. You, you did it in midseason at Oklahoma. You swapped out a quarterback. You found Caleb Williams. And I think it was 2019, you got rid of your defensive coordinator. I mean, you even swapped out your offensive line starters this season after game seven. And the results weren't, weren't great. They were better than what they were producing before. So coach, literally, whatever it takes, it's time to figure this out. Just get it done. You need to figure out a way to make your so-so team look good again. I'm not shooting for great. I want this team just to look good, above average. I, I Coach Riley, I need you to figure out why the offense can score in the first and fourth quarters, but not in the second and third quarters. This is when you should be putting teams away, not figuring out how to make a comeback win. It's not what USC football is about. Not when you've got the best player in college football playing quarterback. I haven't even brought up the other players on this roster. We've got some really good ones. Let's forget about the defense right now. I mean, let's be honest. It kind of feels like it's been forgotten all season. So what's wrong with your side of the ball? With the offense? That what this team is supposed to be leaning on this year? while you change the culture and you bring in the players you want. I'm sorry, but there was just too much joy in your enthusiasm when you said, hey, we're 7-2 and two overall, and we're 5-1, and one, and in second place in the best conference in the country. That was your answer after Saturday's win against Cal, 50-49. to 49. Second place in the best conference in America? Was I the only one who heard the Bruin sound effect going off in the background when he said that? Or did you kind of get that feeling up the back of your, you know, up your spine? It was like, oh, that kind of sounded a little bit like Clay Helton. Okay, Coach Riley is not Coach Helton. <laughs> Let's be really clear about that. But I think there's times when I hear some of the th same things that USC's former coach said or would intimate. And off the record, I'm talking to some people who are feeling the same way. Look, neither Coach Riley or Coach Helton, for that matter, they're not dumb. Coach Riley knows he ha knows how to answer the questions from the media. However, if anyone expected or anticipated him to answer the question that was posed to him following USC's 50 to 49 victory with a yes or anything in the affirmative, then you're naive. So the question was asked. It was on the record. Coach, about your defense, what will force you to make a change? I'm paraphrasing. Cool. So now what? You got the question out there. Everybody wants to ask the question. It's a good question. It's pertinent. But it's not the right time or place. Because the closest satisfactory answer you or me or anybody in the media is going to get, a fan, if they want to ask the question, is this. This is what you're going to get from, from any head coach and not just Coach Riley. After the season, the staff will sit down and will evaluate how things went and what's necessary to improve, end quote. That's the type of answer you're going to get. So if you're anticipating an answer from Lincoln Riley other than, 
what he offered, which which was my thoughts are trying to beat Washington next week. That's my thought on it. If you are expecting or looking for anything other than that, then you're really you're looking for fool's gold. Coach Riley is not going to say, yeah, we just gave him 49 points to Cal and, and made another no-name quarterback look really good. Hey, good news, everyone. Alex has to find his own way home back to L.A. End quote. I made all that up. You're not going to hear that type of answer. Asking the hard question isn't difficult. I'm talking to the fans who say, you guys need to ask Coach Riley the hard questions. Asking the question isn't difficult. It's really, really easy. However, knowing how and when to ask the question, that's what's important. Because I really doubt, in fact, I'm 100% confident that Coach Riley is aware of the pitchforks and the lit torches that are, that are congregating outside the Howard Jones Field walls. And all that's going on while the tar is boiling for the feathering ceremony. I promise you. Coach Riley is aware of the situation. You might not like the answers. I might not like every answer. But I know better than to ask, when are you going to fire your defensive coordinator? In a sense, that was the question. And I'm not knocking the question. Again, it's pertinent. It needs to be asked. But right then, right there, probably not. It's now time for your Game Changer of the Week, brought to you by Athletic Brewing Company. How about junior safety Jalen Smith? He had that late fourth quarter pass uh, deflection. Yeah, it was huge. <laughs> uh, the same way Athletic Brewing has completely changed the non-alcoholic beer game, Jalen's play in the secondary, that literally changed the outcome of the game this past Saturday. In one of those games where defense stood out, <laughs> Jalen's pass deflection on a two-point conversion saved the game for USC. And because Athletic Brewing's brews are non-alcoholic, you can enjoy more game-saving plays and you'll remember them too. So before, during, or after the game, Athletic Brewing makes non-alcoholic beers that actually taste good. You can find Athletic Brewing Company's non-alcoholic brews at a store near you or you can buy them online at athleticbrewing.com. First time customers, you can use code locked on to get 15% off your first online order. That's code locked on at checkout, and you can use, and you're going to get 15% off your, your order at athleticbrewing.com. Near beer, exclusions and conditions apply. Athletic Brewing Company, fit for all times. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whatever you're into, speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got it covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebay.com forward slash motors. eBay, guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions will apply. The college football season is here, and this season, lockdown is picking up our coverage. Each Friday, Locked On will go live from 12 p.m. till 1 p.m. Eastern on every Locked On College YouTube channel. Locked On College Football Live covers the college football playoff implications, the conference rivalry games, and they're going to go in-depth like only Locked On can, including insight and analysis like the ones you're getting here from our stable of Locked On College hosts covering their team every day. Find Locked On College Football Live every Friday from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern on any Locked On College YouTube channel. You're not going to want to miss it. What's wrong with Caleb Williams this season? Is there anything wrong with Caleb Williams this season? I remember watching the Heisman Trophy ceremony last year. And he said he wanted to come back and help USC make the playoffs for the first time. He was looking down at the, the, 
the quarterbacks in front of him who were sitting there as the bridesmaid. And he was envious. He was jealous. Those guys were going to the playoffs. USC wasn't. Caleb Williams, he wanted to come back. He wanted to make the playoffs. He wanted to play cleaner and play more mistake-free as far as turnovers. Well, that's not happening this year. I know he's been playing, well, I'm assuming that he's been playing with an injured finger on his throwing hand. And it's it's kind of easy to tell because his throws have been really erratic so far this season. They're high, they're low, they're overthrown, they're underthrown. Um, he's late to release the ball. But more than that, he kind of looks like he's playing not to get hurt. I'm not saying he's he's quit or he's going at, you know, he's not going 100%. Not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is he looks to be more conservative in his play this year. Again, I'm not saying he's not giving 100% effort. I get, but there's just times where it looks like when you're watching him play, it almost feels like he's protecting himself. And then there were other times where you think, wow, he, he better protect himself, and he doesn't. It, it's, it, it, it's, it's kind of that extreme on one end to the other. There's, there's no consistency in the middle with Caleb this season, at least in my opinion, from these untrained eyes. Yeah, I'm not going to drop that one. Sorry, Coach. Uh, look, I think everyone agrees. You can't play football trying to avoid injury. Because when you do that, you end up getting hurt. So is Caleb just, is he too distracted with everything that's going on this season? I mean, let's be honest. There aren't too many college-age students out there, or athletes, making big seven-figure salaries while they're still in college. I mean, the day in the life of Caleb Williams, commercial shoots, you got Wendy's, you have the Heisman House, you got all those other uh, brands that are out there that he sponsors as a spokesperson. Uh, some of you might remember during the summer, Caleb took a trip to Monaco to wave the starting flag for the Grand Prix. Pretty cool, huh? Or when he wasn't doing that, he was, you know, he was a, he was a model doing the Hugo Boss runway. Really? Look, everybody can do what they want during the summer, their, their spare time. But when you're the quarterback at USC, you don't have a lot of spare time. Because remember, he still has to find time for his Caleb Cares Foundation. By the way, I love that foundation. It, it's all against bullying. So that's a really good cause. Oh, and by the way, he is still a student athlete. So there's classes, homework, football practices to attend. <laughs> but I don't care how old you are and how well you handle time management. That is just too much on one plate for a for somebody who is a professional, let alone the starting quarterback at USC. That's a lot. Not to mention the pressure to perform at a really high level and be great every time you touch the ball. That's really tough. That's a high standard to, to live up to. So how can you focus on getting better when, when you have all of these, quote, finger quotes, distractions going on around you? You know, Caleb was asked one time, you know, how do you kind of decompress? You know, well, he said he likes to take a drive up the coast on a Sunday, just kind of get away for a few hours. It helps them reset and focus. It's a great way. Still, you don't have a lot of time because once you get back to campus, you have to reset and focus on film. you got to go back and watch the film on, from Saturday's game. That happens on Sundays. And then once that grind starts up again, you, need, you have to find a way to put those distractions behind you. I'm not sure Caleb is doing as well as he could handling everything. I don't know what's going on behind the scenes. This is just my impression of what I see on the surface. I'm trying to judge a book by the cover. And you know you should never do that. When the team wins, I, Caleb Williams, he's out there. He's taking selfies with the fans. He's answering questions. Very gregarious. And the two losses this year, not so much. 
the offense doesn't look crisp. Look, some of that is on the offensive line's inconsistency this year. Some of that is on the play calling, which has been inconsistent this year. Some of that you have to attribute to opposing defenses, uh, watching film, recognizing some weaknesses. I think in Caleb's case, um, he's not a big fan of the 2D cover with a flooded zone underneath. Something that I've recognized. Uh, against Cal, we saw moments of Caleb that reminded me of 2022, where he just he didn't hesitate to take off. He used his feet. He was really decisive of what needed to be done. But it also must feel like, I don't know, there's times when it feels like he, he's been hesitant to do more of that this season. I, I said earlier, you know, a few minutes ago, it seems like he's playing more conservative this season. I have no idea if, if he's been distracted with everything that's going on. But in my opinion, he's not going to win the Heisman this season. And unless he has three really strong games to close out the year, I'm not even sure if he's going to be in New York for the ceremony this year. And uh, unless the the gods of luck reach down from the clouds and kind of touch USC on the shoulder, I think their hopes of making the playoffs are, are slim and none. And right now, slim is just too fat to even get through the door. It's going to take a lot of luck. Look, I know Kansas beat Oklahoma. I know Stanford almost beat Washington. Stuff happens. USC is ranked number 24th in the AP poll. It's a, it's a long ladder to climb. Paul Mountain. So we're going to find out real fast how competitive how how competitive that spirit of Caleb is after Saturday's game against Washington. I think he's looking forward to this game because Washington's quarterback, Michael Penix, he might be the lead in the lead for this year's Heisman. Caleb's competitive spirit does not like that. He's going to want to have a better game. We'll see what happens after this game. I know that's the game we're focused on right now because after that, it's going to get real, real, real fast. You get Washington at home. And up to Oregon. If you didn't catch the score over the weekend, Oregon did to Utah, in Utah, what USC should have done to the pig farmer. There's a big gap right now between USC and the other top programs in the conference. And that's not a good look. Prize Picks is the largest independently owned fan fantasy sports platform in North America. They are the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. It's just you against the numbers. Instead of betting, instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you're going to pick more than or less than two to six player stat projections, and then you could just watch the money kind of roll into your account. Prize Picks is a skill based, real money daily fantasy sports game. And Price Picks offers projections on any sport that you want to watch. College football, college basketball, NFL, NBA, NHL. They got it. Go check it out. You're going to pick two to six players. And if they will go more or less than their Price Picks projections. And you can win up to 25 times your own money on any entry. At Price Picks, you aren't competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections available. And you can do this in like 60 seconds or less. It's that fast. Price Picks offers a recently improved deposit and withdrawal experience. You want to use Apple Pay? You're secure. They use Apple Pay. So go to pricepicks.com forward slash locked on college and use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, go to pricepicks.com forward slash locked on college and use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. <clears throat> okay, if you hadn't heard on Sunday, the number one ranked high school player in Southern California, 
His name's Brandon Lockhart. He plays cornerback. He verbally committed to USC. He's the number one rated guy in the 2026 recruiting class. In other words, he is a sophomore in high school this year. Who knows? Maybe he'll reclassify. I don't even know if that's an option for, for Brandon Lockhart. My point is this. I would barely care if he was a 2025 recruit. It's not personal. I don't know Brandon Lockhart. In fact, I've never even say, seen him play in person, up close, live. So why would I care about a recruit who is still three years away from suiting up for the Trojans? Yeah, look, you always want a little bit of positive recruiting momentum. Yay. we got to recruit for 2026. First of all, this is why I'm not overly concerned or enthusiastic about a recruit who is still three years away from suiting up for USC. First of all, USC's current defensive coordinator isn't going to be USC's Defensive coordinator by the time Brandon is ready to actually commit, put his name on the letter of intent, fax it on it. I feel confident about that. Doesn't mean, look. Secondly, now that USC has his verbal commitment, it probably means his recruitment is going to pick up even more momentum across the country. So by the time name, image, and likeness in schools like Oregon, they get done chasing and paying. For all I know, Brandon's interest could wane. I mean, you remember Dakota Fields, right? And while I don't anticipate Lincoln Riley being elsewhere in 2026, it's also not out of the question that he could be coaching the Rams or the Chargers in three years. I get it. Create some buzz. Get these young men interested and on board. It's all a part of the recruiting process. But this isn't that big of a deal. And he's not a game changer. No one who is 15 or 16 years old is a game changer. We could project that he's going to be really good. But Defensive backs, they're a dime a dozen. They really are. They kind of fall off the trees. And while Brandon is a defensive player, USC needs more help up front of the defensive line and at linebacker. For me, my attention is solely focused on the 2024 recruiting class. And I'll show an occasional interest in a 2025 guy, like a Juju Lewis who was originally a 2026 guy, but he said he's going to reclassify to come in in 2025. Julian Lewis is anticipated to be Lincoln Riley's next great quarterback protege after Malachi Nelson, who came in with a 2023 class, who's waiting to battle Miller Moss for the QB1 spot next season in 2024. Right now, the Trojans' 2024 recruiting class it's kind of stuck in neutral, and it would be backsliding if someone took their foot off the brake. And even if you got the emergency brake on, it's kind of sliding down the hill a little bit. Right now, USC needs to finish their 2023 season really strong with a couple of wins. Three would be great, because these next three in a row, if you win these next three in a row, it's going to send a really strong message not just to the 2026 class or the 2025 class. The young men in 2024 will get a wake-up call. Regardless of how USC finishes this season, I think everybody should anticipate there's going to be a lot of turnover. Players are going to transfer. And again, assuming Alex Grinch is replaced, that means other coaches are going to be moving on as well. So why did Brandon Lockhart decide to verbally commit to USC in, you know, in 2023 as a 2026 recruit? He said, quote, 
they've been struggling, but I have no doubt that in the next few years, they'll pick it up and the defense will be strong, end quote. Okay. I love the confidence. You, got, you have to, right? Obviously, he loves the Trojans, and you'll understand why here in a second. So if you are a defensive recruit and your position coach might be somewhere else in two plus years, why would you commit? Well, in Brandon Lockhart's case, quote, my mom, she had a big impact knowing she had a big impact knowing she was an alum there. So that definitely played a role. And also, just like the life after football part really got to me. You're only going to go so far when it comes to football, and they really preach life after football and always have a second plan. And I really liked that conversations they had with me about that. So that was another big part, end quote. Look, I suppose it doesn't matter who's coaching if a player just wants to stay close to home and play for the Trojans. But it was just the other day when Coach Riley commented that there were players on this roster that shouldn't be on USC's roster. Coach Riley said that the recruiting and roster building prior to his arrival was not on par with what he feels is worthy of USC's brand. You clearly have to do a great job locally, but like I told you guys when I got here, it's about getting the right guys. I think in my evaluation of the program, when we got here and started looking at the roster, I think there are a lot of players from the state of California that, in my opinion, should not be on the USC roster for one reason or, or another. So hiding behind the curtain of, well, at least we're recruiting California kids, doesn't do the program any good, end quote. Absolutely. That last statement, absolutely. However, if programs like Georgia, Ohio State, Alabama, Notre Dame, and even to a lesser extent, Oregon feels good about California talent, I don't know, just saying. They're not taking the talent just to keep it away from USC. That's what USC used to do to the members of the Pac-12. That's not the case here. Because if you're going to feel that way, and again, I get it. It's a very valid point. You're not, you just don't want to recruit California kids for that, for the sake of recruiting them and say you, ha you have them on the roster. But the ones you are recruiting, you better win those battles. And stop making it sound like it's no big deal when you lose that recruiting battle to an Oregon or a Notre Dame or a Georgia or whomever out-of-state program won. Because right now, there are just way too many players choosing other out-of-state programs. Because USC is dropping the ball with recruiting. And I'll say it again. I could not care any less about those mythical recruiting championships. I'm not into the stargazing. However, I do care about the trends that are going the wrong way. And then listening to the staff making excuses for why they have to look elsewhere for recruits. Right now, 2024 is USC's recruiting priority. And then they should go back to the portal for a couple of multi-year players instead of the one-and-done mercenaries. Again, with Lincoln Riley, it's about getting the right guy. But make sure you're coaching them up. Hey, recruiting guys out there who are watching the show, if you're excited about a 2026 recruit, I love it. I love your passion. I appreciate that. But let's focus on what will help what will help USC next season, not in three years. And this is what will help USC's recruiting. According to Coach Riley, at the end of the day, if you go win the national championship and you have a roster mixed from all over the country, nobody's going to say, ah, well, that's great you won a national championship, but you don't have 80% local guys. The flip side is, if you don't have a good year, they're not going to say, well, at least he has a bunch of California kids on the team, end quote. Riley ended his comments about recruiting with a, it was almost like a no-duh statement. Yeah, we want California kids. We want to get the local kids. We want them to be the right kids, the right kind of kids, right kind of students, right kind of players that fit within what we're building not ones that go against the grain of what we're building, end quote. What I will say to that is be really careful and choose your words because it kind of comes across at times like you're saying something negative about the local talent base. 
and what motivates them. I know that wasn't the intent, but that's the way it comes across. All right. So I still care a lot about recruiting. I really care a lot about this season. And I'm going to care about the next episode of Locked on USC that will come at you tomorrow. So until then, everyone, you know what to do.